This is a plunge pool that should have cost me around $5,000. But I made it using these cheap items from the Facebook marketplace. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you how you can do it as well. This build requires three main pieces of equipment. Number one, some kind of container that can hold a large amount of water. I managed to persuade someone I knew to sell me their horse trough for a lovely price of 100 pounds. <laughs> Bro, I think I just ate a whole shit, bro. Number two, a chiller. These are used for aquariums or for animals that require a specific temperature of water to survive, but they're quite expensive. Luckily enough, though, I managed to find one on the Facebook marketplace from a lovely man whose fish had recently perished. Whoa, death. Ah, R.I.P. Melvin. Pour one up for Melvin. <laughs> So, I got this for a bargain price of 80 quid. The last main part was the cheapest one. This is a water pump, and I managed to find this online for 12 pounds. First things first, I need to actually build the frame of this entire ice bath. It's cheap timber, basically. It's the cheapest I could find, but also the sturdiest. This is gonna be a thing that supports the entire frame, and then we'll make it look pretty after, because if we just had a timber frame as the whole look of the thing, it'll just look clapped, you know what I mean? and hollow. So now would probably be a good time to explain the main bulk of the build to you. I want this thing to live in my garden for the next 10 years, so we need to make sure it fits in with the theme of the decking, because if you haven't noticed, horse troughs are pretty ugly. At the same time though, I want to keep the cost as low as possible, so here's my plan. Eight timber support beams built into a timber framework surrounding the trough and the chiller to then attach better looking wooden planks to later down the line. This way, I'm keeping the build cheap, but still making a cold plunge that looks premium. I calculated the measurements and then drove to my local timber yard to collect the wood. Now that's done, I can crack on with the build. Next step, I'm gonna put all the timber together and build one of the sides that covers the entire length of this, and then I'll build the rest of the frame based on that. So I found with like doing ice baths, making them happen or driving to a cryo chamber or going to Tesco to buy five bags of ice is the thing that stops you from actually doing it because that just sounds tedious, you know what I mean? The convenience of this is gonna motivate me so much more to get in here. There's so much wood going to waste in this video. Yo, if anyone wants free wood, yeah, go to pornhub.com. This is the first time I'm screwing anything together. I'm basically doing this to create a joint so I can evenly cut a piece of wood off of that end. It probably doesn't make much sense, but it, it kind of does. I realise now that I explained that terribly. So to put this in simple terms, I build a big wooden rectangle around the base of the trough and the chiller. This is currently upside down, okay, but it'll make sense in a moment. In between these support beams is gonna be insulation. That's gonna stop the cold escape in the ice bath, making the chiller much more efficient at running, costing less money. We're now at the point where the bath is perfectly locked in to the timber frame, and it's time to basically just build the top part of the timber frame now, so it's completely locked in, the structure's solid, and then we're gonna start covering the outside in the nice looking wood. Whoever can name the most Minecraft types of wood Wins. Crimson, that's the never wood, isn't it? That's like Superman, isn't it? That's... Crimson. No, that's kryptonite. I then spent the rest of the day building out the rest of this timber frame. This might only be a few seconds for you guys, but I promise you, this took us hours. This is the final screw to screwing together the timber frame. We get to see how rigid this thing really is now. Retailers had put this on the market for 7K. I'm not even kidding you. You think I'm joking? Look at the screen now. Look at them prices. That's how much these people. There's a price over there, by the way. That's why I just panned. Oh, oh really? Well, on yeah, the chimney? It's up there, yeah. Is it on the chimney? No, no, not that far. Just hovering in this gap here. Oh, that's so weird, man. What the hell, man? Guys, get your camera on the edit. We've got a couple of things to buy, including insulation, an air vent for the chiller, maybe more screws. I don't know. I'm gonna see if my dad's in here as well. Spoiler alert. He wasn't. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be kissing men and asking them for sympathy. <laughs> I'm so allergic to it. For the rest of the day too, we got all of the installation installed and now we're ready to make the bathtub look expensive. The next step is to line the entire outside of the plunge pool with a nice looking wood. It's been a long day, so I'm gonna continue the rest of it tomorrow. So I'll see you in about three seconds. 
Welcome back, it's day two. No, it's day, damn, it's day three already. Time to layer the wood on the outside of the, the ice tub. Let's get into taking some measurements and start cutting some wood up. Okay, so let me just give you guys a quick breakdown of the plan for day three. So obviously at the moment, this thing looks clapped. Stable but clapped. But all of that is about to change. The plan is to run four wooden planks lengthways across each side of the framework and then line the tops with 20 wooden slats facing the opposite way. That way we're using less wood and therefore saving more money. At the same time though, we're getting the most professional looking finish out of our beautiful plunge pool. <laughs> this is looking good, this is looking positive. I may have run into a little bit of a problem here. I'm building this from the top down. And if my measurements are right, I'm gonna have to cut one of these in half to cover this bottom strip of wood here, which is gonna look a little bit ugly. But this wasn't gonna be a problem for long. I'll explain why in a second. This is already starting to become much stronger just because of these panels on the outside tying everything together as one. This is actually insane. As we got to the final plank of wood, we realized having a gap at the bottom of the plunge pool actually made it look more premium, and therefore we left the gap as it is. We've actually smashed this, guys, considering I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> the wood's twisted a little bit, mainly because the frame was kind of pulled so tight it bent some of the wood, but it's not really an issue because we can pad out some of the gaps that that miscalculation has created by wedging the little gaps, basically, with little pieces of wood, and that'll just make it like that little bit more solid. Before I start doing the ends, of the wood down here. I'm thinking I should get this little task out the way that I've been dreading and cutting a square to the size of this to divide the chiller space to the ice bath space. In this side wall down here that I'm gonna have, I'll cut out little holes where the pipes can kind of plumb into the ice bath. Does that make sense? Not really. Let's head back to b &Q. You know how I'm gonna sink next time we start recording. I'm gonna climb to the top shelf here and jump down and snap both my knees. Oh, and like then a, the, the cracking sound will be able yeah, to sink the clip. Do like a suplex, are you? Oh. Yeah, straight up, bro. I need to get some plywood to separate the chiller spot to the bath spot. This looks like it could be the perfect solution. What's the measurements? Because I measured it earlier. Yeah, did you write them down? No, I know them. Do you? Yeah. What are they? 64 centimeters by 55 centimeters. Don't at me. Follow me, guys. Follow me. I know the trick. I might use this because it, it it seems like it could work. I might have a bit of excess, but... Yeah, a few centimetres extra, yeah. Could use this, I'll be about four mil short. I think I'm gonna go for that one, you know. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being four centimetres too short, is there? What, are you four centimetres too short? This is gonna have to do. I think we're good with this, you know. Ah! Oh, my eye! Some wood went in my eye, man! Guys, wear goggles. Wear goggles. Ah! That will do. I'm not too bothered about making that so perfect. It's what's on the outside that counts. We're shallow on this channel. For all you ugly people out there, no hope. Jesus Christ, we're cutting that from the video. <laughs> One more side to go. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how good this thing actually looks when you consider that I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing? So the next step is I'm gonna move the bathtub round so it's in its permanent position because next up, we're actually putting the chiller in the bottom and that's pretty heavy. So I don't wanna be moving it too much after it's uh, after the chiller's in there. Wait, 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 wait. That is not how that happened. <laughs> that's more like it. Wait, I've just realized I should probably give you guys some context as to why I'm cutting a hole in the side of this box. I'm currently trying to make a door that's gonna have hinges so I can access the chiller from the front if I ever need to access the settings. Might have to make a door from scratch out of the wood again to the exact measurements to put back in this hole I'm about to cut. I know that's a mind fuck, yeah? Bear with me, probably a better way. Like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. We've got one more task to do before building the lid. We need to line the top of the box with a premium looking wood. This is only a small detail, but it's gonna make the cold plunge look nice and clean. These are the side panels. These are gonna basically make it look pretty so you can't see the edges of the bath. And this horrible looking timber on the side. 
We're on the third day so far, and I'm not gonna lie to you, it's absolutely battering me. But there's one thing that's keeping me motivated, yeah? And it's making this video for you guys. So if you're enjoying it, please show me some kind of support by hitting the like button. It'll literally take half a second. I love making these type of videos, man. I like building things. Maybe I'll build even crazier things for future videos. If you want to see that, then please just smash the like button right now. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe now. Next up, we're going to box the chiller in with a beautiful looking lid. The aim is to have this line up perfectly with the actual lid so it looks like one continuous piece. A little test of my work. I'm about to take a seat on the part that's kind of covering the chiller right now i'm worried i could fall for it yeah we're good we're good look at that huh what the hell we're almost at the final stages of this build and i, I cannot express to you how excited i am because it's finally taking shape now and i can finally see it kind of coming together and what it's going to look like when it's fully done so i'm cutting this plank of wood down in pieces attaching all of those pieces together to finally create the lid For the next few hours, we carefully attach the lid panels to strong pieces of wood. This will mean when the hinges are on, I can fold the lid back and it'll stay as one solid piece of wood. In theory, this should now be a lid without a hinge. World's largest coffin HD. It's been a long day at the office, boys. And non-binaries. Oh, one more thing for today as well. So this is the cupboard door that goes on the front of the chiller. This is just going to keep the rain out and give me ease of access whenever I need to change the settings on it. And that's what the door is going to look like. I need to put the hinges on next though. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of day three. I'm praying there's no day five. I think we should be able to finish it tomorrow. So I'll see you in a few seconds. So it's day four of the build. The next step is for me to apply the hinges to the lid. I actually put the hinges on the door to the chiller this morning. Off camera because I just wanted to make sure I could get it right. It's time to get the hinges on the lid of the plunge pool. I'm hoping the hinges support the weight of this because it's literally about 100 kg. This lid is, I swear to God, man. If this fails, this whole video goes down the drain. Fingers crossed. Three, two, one. Yes! We have a lid! I'm gonna put a little catch here and on here. So I'm gonna put it up. I can lock it into place so it never falls down. Splendid. Mission accomplished. Not quite. The latch to hold the lid up is now clashing with the edge of the plunge pool. This means I have to cut a square of wood out of the edge just so the lid can shut properly. Mm. Now it's mission accomplished. This is the part that's made this so much more exciting for me, guys, because now I finally get to like have my first use of opening it properly with the handle and locking it onto there. I can kind of envision how I'm going to spend my mornings for the next couple of years. Three, two, one. Oh! Oh! Perfect. <laughs> Yo. We're just on our way to an aquatic shop because they're probably the best people that are going to be able to supply us with like water pipes because they obviously supply fish tanks, pond stuff, garden stuff. Hopefully they have the parts that we need to finish it off this build. So, the part that you've been waiting for, how does this thing work? Essentially, by using the pump and two pipes, it pulls water out of the trough through one pipe, pulls the water down inside of the chiller, and then pumps the water back out into the trough at whatever temperature the chiller is actually set to. Now, this thing goes as low as two degrees Celsius, which means even when it's 30 degrees outside during summer, the water in the plunge will still be ice cold. Also, I'd like to hear from you guys in the comments section what you think I could have done differently about this build. So now for a start, yeah, I don't even have the right drills or the right bits to be doing the things that I should be doing today. Yeah, let me know. I'm intrigued to read your comments. It died. It died. Let's put it on charge. It's another bodge job again. No idea if this is going to work, but I found this in my garage. It's probably not even for metal. I'm pretty sure it's for wood. Plan C. We're going to try this instead. This usually never lets me down. Yeah, let's not do that. It smells of burning metal. While we're waiting for the drill to charge, I'm gonna put a handle on the front of this door just so it's easier to open. And I have an idea. What the fuck are you doing? I'm just, I need this drawer handle. Jay, that's the common handle, drawer handle. Yeah, but I need, yeah, but I need one for my door to my, um, Go eyes. Again.
I am so happy about that. I'm so happy. Get up my face, man. Yes, my personal spice. Yeah. This pipe is too big. You're too big for the hole. Safe to say, by day four, I was starting to lose my sanity and my DIY skills by the looks of it. I did it. It's not about how you get there. All right, as long as you got there. You know you said earlier about leaving comments about like how you could have done this thing better? Yeah. I reckon that might be one of them, you know? You reckon? Yeah. Leave me alone. We're gonna silicon around these so they're just like solid in place. The silicon we've got is really good so it should hold that in place. This right here is the pump. This will be submerged in the water obviously when the bathtub's full. And this will suck water in from the ice pool, send it up into the chiller, then the chiller will send it back into the pool at a colder temperature. Time to silicon it up. So it turns out I didn't have the right drill piece for this, but not to worry. Expanding foam top to silicon will solve the issue. I know some of you sat there going, what is that job he's just done on that silicon? When you're not even going to be able to see it anyway once the water's filled up. I'm just trying to neaten it up a little bit. But that's the best I can do. Don't judge me. Or if you're going to judge me, do it in the comments in a constructive way where I can learn. It's finally time to find out if this thing actually works. Seven days later, we're finally here. There's only one thing left to do. This is the first step to taking a bath in ice water for the rest of the year. <sighs> this is going to be horrid. I've got a five minute timer on my phone. As soon as the alarm gets off, I get to get out. While I contemplate my life decisions, let's just quickly talk about the budget. Our original goal was to build a plunge pool for less than a thousand pounds. The trough costs 100 quid. The chiller costs 80 pounds. The pump costs 12 pounds. On day one, we spent 282 pounds 80 on wood. On day two, we spent 172 pounds 60 on insulation. On day three, we spent 77 pounds 71 on accessories for the plunge pool. And this brings the overall total to. 725 pound and 11 pence yeah. which is exactly 274 pound 89p under budget which is more than five times cheaper than your average online plunge pool that includes a chiller but that's enough stalling let's get into the plunge pool five minutes starting Coldest ice bath I've ever been in. This is fucking atrocious, man. This is so different to a normal ice bath with ice in it. When the entire body of water is set to the temperature of three degrees Celsius, it's a completely different game. Ah! Well, my body's got knives in it. Give me a minute. Ah! It's like knives. Ah! Ah! There's a lot I've got to work on in my DIY skills and my mental ability to cope with three degrees Celsius. If you've got any tips, please leave them down in the comment section below on the DIY and the mental capability side of things. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys on my next upload. I love you. Goodbye.